Hi ladies, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Uh, we're doing Parashat Mishpatim. And Baruch Hashem, we spoke in the past so many times about Parashat Mishpatim, about the laws that the uh, Jewish people got right after uh, getting the Torah. And so today I took a different subject that uh, is in the Parsha, but uh, we didn't really speak about this in the past. It says in the Parsha, Mechashefa lo techaye. What does it mean? A witch. Hmm? Do not allow, yeah, uh, you know, do not allow um, source uh, witch, witches, okay witchcraft and uh, all whatever is in this area do not allow them to live what's the problem why we have this prohibition in this pasha in this pasha we're talking about laws between ben adam le chavero you know uh, if somebody had to take money from someone and cannot return in what should he do what kind of laws you know in civil court between people uh, somebody damaged the uh, animal of another friend, somebody, you know, things between us and other people. What is this? Lot Shefa Lot What does wizard and and um, and trickeries and uh, all kind of uh, mystical. Uh, hmm? mystical mystical okay, what does this have to do with Ben Adam Lechavero? So um, and this is not the only place in the Torah that it says, you know, not to do this type of stuff, you know, all kind of magics, all kind of uh, magic tricks, um, not to go to fortune tellers, not to go and do all kind of uh, things, you know, uh, with different all kind of other forces. Uh, talking to dead people, communicating, doing all kind of uh, dark black magics and stuff like that. It says also in Sefer uh, Vaika, uh, third book, Levit, uh, uh, third book, Don't go to those people who speak, who try to forecast the future, who speaks, you know, Yidoni, if you remember, Shaul HaMelech went to Baalat HaOv. He, want, he wanted to know if he's going to win the battle or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asked her, please go and bring Shmuel HaNavi. Shmuel HaNavi died, passed away. Bring him up and I want to ask him if I'm going to win the war or not. Okay? These are communicating with the dead. They're doing all kinds of science and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to do. He did it. He, him, huh? he, did, it? he yeah, did that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then uh, he was told that he's going to die in the battle. Mm -hmm. uh, he don't him. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, they used to have this type of uh, a, a bird that they would take the bird, okay, put it underneath uh, the armpit, and ask all kind of questions and and. and want to know about the future, what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. So, um, um, also in Sefer Dvarim, it says, okay. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't pass your daughter or your son through fire. I you know people used to do that in the past. Molech. Molech is to sacrifice uh, a child for some kind of a, uh, some kind of a ideal. Kosem ksamim, you know, doing all kind of uh, tricks. Meonen, menachesh, mechashev, all kind of witchcrafts. Chover uh, chever. Um, and I'm going to explain all these things with the Rosh team, you know, asking, talking with the dead, all kind of dark magics and stuff like that. I'm going to explain each thing what it is. So, Harabam explains that um, every society, okay, has this obligation to, res to protect the, the people, especially protect the weak people in the society. And... Uh, and uh, the same way that you cannot allow people to sell drugs outside to everyone. You cannot say people have free choice and endanger them, you know, by 
um, making them uh, uh, make the the drugs to be available to them in every store, in every place, in every corner. You cannot say they have a free choice, you know, it's up to them. No. The same way you want protect, to protect the people from the drugs and from uh, bad um, stuff, okay? So, okay, it's our obligation to protect people from this kind of uh, magics and... Uh, uh, sources and uh, and uh, fortune tellers and all this. Why? Because they are not coming from a good source. Mm -hmm. They are trying to take advantage of your weakness. Okay, take your money. Okay, and 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 take as much as they can, and then tell you all kind of stuff. Not from the good. Not from the good source. So. Um, um, they give you all kind of false hopes that, uh, you know, you're going to be better tomorrow, everything is going to turn okay, do this, do that, give me this sum of money, give me that sum of money, I'm going to uh, make... Uh, there's, there's all kind of stuff that people do. If you know, uh, and you know, you, you can tell me, I don't have to tell you, some people put uh, spells so that, uh, God forbid, a woman won't be able to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Or husband and wife, you know, shouldn't get together. People do all kind of stuff. Uh, and um, um, all kind of spells that people put so that he won't succeed and he won't have good luck. And, and, and all kind of stuff like that that people do. And uh, we have to... Uh, we have to make sure that we don't have this type of people in our communities because they try just to harm, they don't do any good, okay? We can also, there's also the opposite, of course, uh, thing where we can go to the rabbis and we can pray for good luck and we can do all kind of zgulot and the rabbis do deal with these things, okay? So we, we try not to go to this bad and evil because the intention is only evil. We know that Bil'am, for example, okay, Bil'am wanted to curse Am Yisrael. Why did Balak go to Bil'am? Why not? Why didn't he go to somebody else? It was Khalitah. No, no. Balak, he was the king of Moab, Midian, yeah. all this. Why, why he came to Bil'am? Bil'am was a bad man. He wasn't yeah, a good man. Bil'am had a relationship with his donkey. Yeah. We know that Bil'am, he was, he was tame, he was contaminated. And people like that, they are attracted to, to bad. It says that he was so smart, Katuv, Yodea Dat Elyon, Bil'am. Maza Yodea Dat Elyon, he used to concentrate, he used to know what's the exact time during the 24 hours <coughs> at the dawn time, something like that, when he will say a curse and somebody will say amen in, in heaven and the curse will happen. He knew how to do that and he was concentrating and focusing on a certain time to damage the Jewish people, okay, or, or anybody else that, that he wants. So these are these people that are doing all kind of um, you know, wizards and, 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 and trick or trees and, and all this. Okay, so... Arambam says, don't pay attention to these people, and also whatever they do is all false, and it's not right, and it's not real. Arambam says that there is something like that, like bad, ma dark magics, and, 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 you know, and they can harm, and they could do all kind of bad stuff. And he says that um, today, uh, the, always it was like this, that the world, uh, the, the man and the world is is in this balance between good and evil, all the time, between good and evil. Good and bad. Yeah. And so um, there is a forces that could build a person, and there, there, there's these forces that could destroy a person, okay? And so, uh, so is the spiritual world, is also balanced between these two forces, and, uh, and, um, uh, uh, um, uh, a person, when he's doing good things, he could come to the most glorified uh, actions. He, he become the he can become the best of the creation. And if he's not doing good, he could come to the lowest point. Okay, 
and uh, and do evil and do bad and uh, bring the world, God forbid, to a destruction. So our Judaism is a religion of doing stuff. You cannot have things instantly, you know. You cannot get instant magic and everything was going to turn okay. You have to work very hard in order to get things. So uh, this is what we're talking about. Now, what are these things that are not allowed to do according to the Torah? So it says kesem, magics, all kind of trickery. Mm. trickery. Um, or changing the the nature or the reality of the the, the nature. Um, the Torah says that this is a prohibition because this uh, magic uh, people it, it they they think that you could, they could profit the future. They could tell you or they could change the future right. for you, and. Um, Sometimes they work with uh, crystal balls. Sometimes they look at all kind of mirrors. Okay. They work with sand. They work with the earth. They work with all kind of stones. They do all kind of stuff, and uh, this is their way of doing. Sometimes they use using all kind of sticks in order to concentrate and 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 to to reach uh, their goal. This is not allowed. So meonen uh, or so So I always mix up with this word. Source. Sorcery. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, these are people that um, are trying to look at the stars, you know, and uh, tell the person um, if a certain thing, uh, when is good for him to do certain thing, when is good or bad for him to do certain things. There are those people who divine, they're like fortune tellers, tell you uh, with omnis, omens? All kind of things that happens uh, in his surroundings, um, if it's better to do or not, they're all similar things. For example, uh, a black cat passed yeah. next yeah. to your house, so probably it's a bad that. luck for you and it's you're true. not... Yeah? Superstition. Oh, yeah, all kind of stuff like that. Witchcraft <laughs> are people witch? that uh, doing stuff, actions that look like, you know, they deviate from the nature uh, physically, usually it's not happening, and they attribute it to themselves. It's my powers, it's my strength, and I'm able to do these things. And uh, they, they do all kind of spells, they do all kind of prayers that they, that they do, okay? It's not allowed. Uh, withers are people that make people think that they do all kind of uh, wondrous things, like miracles, and... But the truth is that they're not doing anything special. It's like, it's like, uh, in, in Sefer Shemot, we, we see that uh, Paro was the king in Egypt, right? Paro was, was one of the biggest uh, wizards. He, he knew stuff. He was invisible. I read in one of the Mufashim that no one could see him, mm -hmm. except Moshe Rabbeinu. Oh. Okay. He hid himself, he made himself invisible. You know, we know that he wasn't tall, he was a midget, he, he was a small man, okay? But he didn't want people to think that he's so small, and he covered himself so people won't see him, he was invisible. He was, he saw everything, he was controlling everything, and he got so much powers, you know, people obeying him and everything, he thought that he became like God. This is what, what he felt. And so he had all kind of advisors. They say that even his wife was a big uh, witch that knew how to do witchcrafts. And uh, he had the Khartoumim. Khartoumim are people that are talking to the dead. He, they're doing all kind of stuff. And through this, you know, through all kind of, they take bones of dead people yeah. and they, they do all kind of spells and this. And they, they know to, to forecast what's going to happen. Okay? He had all kind of advisors. He had all kind of uh, people. Magic. And whenever, we know that whenever he dreamt uh, some of his dreams, they couldn't answer him. They didn't know. As much as they look in the stars, in the books, in the all kind of uh, <coughs> fires and all kind of stuff, and all uh, in the bones, in the dead, in the disease, whatever, they didn't find, they didn't understand. What is he dreaming? Who 
knew his dreams, who yes. knew how to interpret his dreams? Yosef HaTzadik. Yosef HaTzadik came from the jail. He wasn't the jail, right? He comes to Paro and he says, Bila die. It's not me, it's God. Uh, Hashem tells me what to tell you and I am telling you. And this is the first time ever that Paro says, Haraitem, you saw this type of a man? Isha Shavuach Elokimbo? He never mentioned you know, God before or spirit or, or, or something. And he admitted that Yosef HaTzadik knew so much that uh, it, it looks like, like a God talking from his, from his mouth. Uh, why did Yosef get this? Why Yosef knew much more than all his advisors and, 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 and the magic people and stuff? Because they come from arrogance. You know who I am, you know what I could do, you know what I'm able to do. Yosef was not. Yosef tells, whatever my, I have, it's only from Hashem. I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And when you come this way, okay, this is when you can uh, uh, it. win it, stop it, get protected from these people too. Moshe Rabbeinu was also later on with a different paro or the same paro, we don't know exactly, but later on, Moshe was the only one that could see him, that could fight with him. No one could fight with him. Why? Because Moshe was the most humble person on earth. And with his prayers and with his personality, he was able to defeat, you know, this biggest uh, enemy of the Jewish, of, of the world at that time. So, um, from the beginning already, we see that in the Torah, in the, in the Tanakh, we see a lot of people that use magic tricks and, and, and stuff like that. It speaks about Abraham Avinu that uh, gave to Yitzhak everything. But to the Bnei Pilagshim, to the children of, you know, he married after, or afterwards, after Sarah passed away, he married a Ktura or Agar again. And so to the children, to, to these kids, he gave them Shemot Tum'ah. That's what uh, one of the Mufashim says. Okay. okay? And he sent them to the East. All these Eastern people today, people who live in the East, mm -hmm. there, there are some of them are called the Barhamim. Barhamim is from the word Avraham. Okay? Uh, people who live in the East, they are all idol worshippers. They got this Shemot Tum'ah and they deal with this. Till today they deal with this. Okay? Um, um, we speak here also about... Um, so. Uh, from the other side, okay, we have the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah, the mystic world, the Jewish mystic world, okay, they say that uh, Judaism teaches us that um, there is a hidden uh, world, there is a hidden uh, the wisdom, okay, and um, and uh, um, but we don't, but in the Kabbalah, they try to come closer to Hashem. They try to make the person, the people, come close to Hashem, not as the, this tomb of forces, they try to make people far away from Hashem, okay? These are the difference between these two uh, ways of, of, uh, of, uh, the way that it's, it's in this, this, this world. This, uh, magic tricks and all these, they try to determine what's going to be the destiny of people, what's going to be the fate of people. Sometimes they want to tie knots, tie all kind of flocks of people, do all kind of stuff. You know, in the Bukharians, they have chila. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chila is 40 days that if somebody is married, okay, newly yeah, married, married, cannot go to another wedding. Yeah. Oh, they have... Birth. They believe in it, yeah? after giving birth, not to go 40 days somewhere. There is, huh? there is all kind of stuff. Yeah. There is, There are some sources to this thing, okay? There are some sources, but uh, it depends also. Yeah, all these things sources about... Sources from I, where? I, huh? From Our the antique sources, there are some sources. You know, the, whatever the elder people did, they, there is something in there. Now, it depends also how much you believe in this, of course. And it also, all this Ainara and, and, and all these uh, mystic things, it's midah kenaki midah, it's measure for measure. If you're doing these things, it's gonna come to you. Okay, if God forbid people are doing bad stuff, 
it's very dangerous because it can come back to them. You know, big time yeah. it can come back to them. It speaks about Yosef HaTzadik. Why Yosef HaTzadik was immune from Ainara? Yosef HaTzadik didn't have Ainara. Katuv ben parat Yosef ben parat alayin. He didn't have Ainara. Why? Because Yosef HaTzadik had Ain Tova, had a good eye. Everything that happened to him, even when his brothers do such a, a, a <coughs> not justice thing to him, injustice, you know, when they sold him, and then he blessed them. He told them later, "Atem chashavtem lava." Okay, you wanted to do bad, but Hashem chashavah latova. Hashem turned everything to the best. The reason that I'm here in Mitzrayim is only for the best. It's for you to come here and to be able. I will be able to provide for you and everything, everything. A person that thinks only good about other people. He has a good eye, so evil eye cannot control him. Mm. Evil eye can control, God forbid, people who do this type of stuff, you know? So, and so and also, I, I read something interesting. And I just have to find where I read it. Uh, I read, okay, I'll come back to it soon. Um, it says in Masechet Sota about a widow by the name Yohani Batrativi. She was, uh, she looked like righteous to everyone. And uh, when it was time for a woman to give birth, she used to do all kind of magics and she used to close mm -hmm. oh her her, her womb mm -hmm. so that the baby won't be able to come out. Oh, oh. God. And then, when the woman, Miskena, suffers, suffers, suffers at labors and the baby is not coming out, mm -hmm. they used to come on her and tell her, you are a righteous woman, can you pray for us, please, please pray for us so that uh, the, the woman, no. she, that she is going to give birth easy. So this is when she would open mm -hmm. all this uh, mm -hmm. lag, or whatever, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the magic craft that she used to do. And the baby would come out safe and sound. Everyone used to say, oh, this Yohani, she's such a righteous woman. And whenever you have a problem, go to her and this oh. and that. One day it happened that somebody that worked in the house, uh, he was there, he was doing a painting, I don't know, something that he was doing. And she was rushing to this woman that she gives birth and she wanted to go and help her. And he hears rattling noise from one of the pots in the house. He didn't understand. What is this rattling noise? It says the same way that the baby kicks in his oh. mother's womb, this type of thing. I don't know what it means. He opened the lid. And the minute that he opened the lid, this witchcraft, uh, you know, yeah, perished, right. whatever. And the, the, they heard that the baby came out, uh, you know, <laughs> easily. This is how it was... It became famous uh, that they told it uh, that this woman is not really righteous. She's a, a witch, a woman that does you know this kind of stuff. So the, the, there are things like that. Uh, look, uh, in the time of the Gemara also it speaks about Rabbi Shimon ben Shetach that it was very it was very common in these days. To have this, uh, this uh, wizards and witches, uh, witches and stuff. One day they caught 80 women, 80, 80 witches, witches uh, in one day. And uh, usually Sanhedrin, you're allowed to kill only one a day. And he made a, a special uh, one-time uh, law, kind of, or acha'a, you know, temporary law for that okay. day only. They killed all of them in one shot, in one day. 80 women. It was very, very... Uh, today, Baruch Hashem, it's not... Uh, they used to have this stuff. Today, Baruch Hashem, we don't have it. The, the sources of Tum'ah decreased. It's not like it used to be. Also, sources of, of Tara dec sure. decreased. Yeah, it became lower. It's not like it used to be. So, But we don't have it like we used to have it in the past. Especially women go the witch. So in the Gemara, it says, Mechashefa lo techaye. Mechashefa is a woman. And uh, in the Gemara says, what, women are where used to be doing it more? They say, no, also men used to be, used to, we know about Bilam, we know about Paro, uh, uh, we know about Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, he also had 
all kind of uh, witchcrafts and people, uh, wizards that used to do all kind of stuff. They said, how did Hashem like allow this? this? Huh? Isn't that Hashem's power? Mm -hmm. How did He allow this to even okay. go through? How does He allow it? So, Hashem allows the evil to be in this world too because He wants us to have the freedom of choice to choose good. Because if, if you know, these people would never ever ever have any power, only the rabbis would have power, of course everyone would be religious, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is not what Hashem wants. Hashem wants us to, each and one of, one of us, to decide on his own which way he wants to, 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 go, to go through, okay? He wants to become tzaddik or wants to become rasha. And Hashem gives them the opportunity, he gives choice. them the means, he gives them the choice, sometimes money to do even, even, even evil, you know? It doesn't prevent it. And it's our uh, decision, whatever we want to do. So, uh, um, yeah, so, oh, that's what I want to tell you. In Bukharian weddings, and not only Bukharian, some other adults also, uh, uh, people are supposed to uh, open their hands oh, yeah. during the chupa. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Nobody says it. Uh, no, it's a law, it's a law, it's a law, it's a Open from the breath. <laughs> and so yeah. to wear yeah. everything yeah. loose yeah. sometimes, yeah. you know, not See, to touch. Like Wait, right. so, yeah. so yeah. I, I, mean, wrote, I read, yeah. I read, yeah. where, what's the source? I, I didn't know it myself. What, what was the source of this? So why they open their hands so that they won't hold all kind of stuff, at, you know, they try to lock, to lock people's lock. Lock. Some, lock. Because some people, they take, um, they, they take, uh, locks, oh lock, open lock, yeah, yeah. or uh, thread and 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 oh, and, 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 needle, the and, do and they're so they bored. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> so bored. And so, uh, so what did they read? Where where is it coming from? That's where the rabbi says to do it. It says that uh, there is, uh, there is katukaha. It says in kikach ish isha chadasha. Whenever a man. So, who wants to get married to a, a woman, he shouldn't go to the army for one year, he should be with his wife and make her happy. This is what it says. A pasuk read afterwards, it says, Speaks here about if somebody loans money to his friend and he needs to, to take a collateral for this, he shouldn't take a collateral, an object that uh, used is used to prepare food because people need this thing. Don't take this thing from from them. Mm -hmm. So it, it's two subjects that it looks like there's no connection between them. And usually the, it's not like that. The usually usually there is a connection between things. Lo yachavol rechaim rechaim is a woman. Rechaim is a, there's always yachavol eh? from the word chevel. Chevel is a rope uh, to, to to put together. So. Um, there is, there is something that's called kshirat chatanim vekalot, when people tie uh, the luck of uh, bride and groom, there is something like that. And so, and this is the connection that they see it from, from the Torah. They used to do these things, and it says, whoever does such a thing, okay, it, it, it prevents the man to be come close to his wife. They cannot even get together, it prevents. And so whoever does such a thing, it says, uh, he would never be atoned forever. Uh, and, uh, and he has no portion because um, he prevents when the resurrection will happen, all the souls need to come to this world. But if you prevent souls to come from this world, you don't want this to happen. So the punishment for this is very, very wow. severe. Wow. So, um, so this is how strong it is. This is the reason that a lot of uh, people, they do Kiddush Duzi. Maza Kiddush Duzi. It's like private uh, chupa, only to the most important, close people to you, the people that love you, that won't do these witchcrafts on you. So they do it usually... Uh, an hour before or a night before or something like that, the first two brachot usually, this is the most important thing. And some people do it in advance and, you know, in the whole they do like the shower brachot, 
but some people uh, they don't believe in this and they, they if you don't if you if you're not yeah. so it's okay. People do not believe in Hashem. I would say great. In Masechet Gittim, it speaks about the daughter of, of Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman was a big Amorai, was a big, big rabbi. But his daughters were not. It looked like they are very, very righteous girls because they used to, it says in the Gemara, Bukhashot Bagdera. They used to steer uh, in, the, uh, in the path with their own bare hands, with their hands. Oh. Not wow. with a not with a yeah. spoon or something with their hands, yeah. and they wouldn't get burned. Yeah. And people would say, "Whoa, this is a righteous people that a fire cannot control them, cannot burn them. Nothing happens to them." Mm. So to the to the public, it appeared like they are very very righteous people. One day, they were captured. It used to be in the past that they used to take. Uh, Jewish uh, male or female and take a lot of ransom for them, okay? Money. Money to release them. So they captured these girls and they were in, in this type of a prison. And at that time, there was this rabbi by the name of Elish, who was also captured by them and was also in that prison. And Rav Elish was able to uh, get escaped. And he said to himself, why, why should I escape? Why should I save only myself? Maybe I should go and save also these girls from, from, from the prison. So he said, let me, he stood for, for a while next to that prison, next to their uh, women, wherever they gather, to see what's the best time to get in. And he hears them talking. He hears them from the inside and they talk among themselves, they communicate and they say, we don't want to go back to our husbands. We should better stay here because uh, our captives, the ones that captured us, they give us all whatever we need. Mm. And so, mm -hmm. Elish read that and he got shocked. They don't want to go back to their husbands, they get all whatever they need. And he kept it to himself and he ran away uh, by himself. After a while, they came back to their cities, these uh, girls of Rav Nachman. And they continued doing this and, and, and making themselves like they're righteous. This is when Rabbi Elish said, he said, uh, they think that they're righteous. They are, witch, they, they are witches Witching. and they do witchcrafts. Why? What is this story? So one of the rabbis explains something, something like that. He says, there are some people, like this daughter of Rav Nachman, that endanger themselves in all kinds of circumstances and they say, this is not going to happen to me. I'm going to go, I'm going to do okay. you know, things that, that rabbis usually do not allow to do, but I'm protected. I could, call, I could control myself, you know. Nothing is going to happen to me. And you cannot take this risk because you're playing with, uh, fire. with existing fire. It's no good. And so... And, uh, and this is uh, how they started to fall. They thought, you know, nothing is going to happen to me, and it wasn't good. So um, here is this uh, another story about uh, <laughs> witches and stuff. Uh, okay. Um, Asaba, I want to tell you a story about the Saba Mishpoli. Saba Mishpoli, he lived in the time of the Baal Shem Tov. And uh, those days, it was still uh, very common to do magic, to do tricks, to do stuff like that. People had powers. And Saba Mishpoli, he uh, was a very famous, you know, people used to make a lot of people, Chazor B'Tshuva, used to teach them the way of Hashem, how to come close, what to do, used to showed people the path, the right path. And he once told the story that happened to Rab Elimelech Melishansk and his brother Rab Zusha. Rab Elimelech and Rab Zusha were two righteous, righteous brothers that used to go from town to town. They didn't stay in their own Bet Midrash and learn, learn, learn. They used to go from town to town. They used to do even galut, you know, to atone for the sins of the Jewish people. And, 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 and wherever the problem they used to see by people, they used to tell them and, 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 um, and rebuke them and tell them what to do and teach them. 
Okay? The last year that they were in exile, in a way, they were lost. They were walking, 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 didn't find their, break, their way back home. And they were walking for a long time in this hot, hot place, dry weather. They were hungry, they were thirsty. They had some dry bread, but, uh, you know, dry bread. Uh, and, 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 and they wanted to drink, they wanted, and they were walking and they were walking, and they don't find their way uh, to their homes. So after two days of walking, of walking, of walking, they came to this village and they were inquiring, asking, are there Jewish people here? No, there's no Jewish people here. No, not at all, even not one. So they didn't know what to do, okay? They were wondering, wondering, and then somebody told them, you know, in the far end of this village, there is a motel that is run by two Jewish girls. You can go there. So they were very happy. They go, they go, they come to this hotel, abandoned, looks like no one was there. So there was this well outside, they drank some water, they washed their feet or whatever. And then after a while they saw these two sisters coming. So, how are you rabbis, can we help you? The rabbi is, who are you, what are you doing here? He said, we're two Jewish orphan girls, we don't have families, we don't have anyone, and we're here. Oh, you, are you married? No, we're not married. There's no Jewish people here. We're not married. But we're, we're here. We're fine. There's a panasa. People are coming. We're going. We're, we're okay. Okay. So they, they offer the rabbis to eat, to drink. And they say, well, we, we want to rest a little bit first because they didn't know these girls. They don't know if they're kosher, if they're not kosher. Would they keep anything? Did somebody, did somebody come to slaughter there or not? They didn't know these things. So they said, let us have some time. We're going to find out more about these people and then we'll see. So these girls are very flattery. They're very nice. They, they tell them, okay, whatever you want, Rabbi. So they show them their rooms. They get their rooms. And uh, they didn't go out to eat yet. So uh, they passed like that in the evening. Uh, um, they asked them to eat. They said, no, no, we're tired. We want to first to sleep. Something didn't make, didn't make sense to them. They didn't understand why two lonely girls, Jewish girls, they're, they're among Gentiles. And the way that they were wearing their clothing, it didn't look to them so tsanua. And, and maybe the way that they walked and the way that they behaved, didn't, something didn't make sense to them. Nighttime, they... Uh, she asked them again to, they asked them again to come and eat. They said, no, 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 we're tired. We want to go to sleep first because they didn't know yet. And uh, they prepared the water to wash their hands whenever they get up. They prepared candles for them. Maybe they want to study during the night or something. And, uh, and they went to sleep. They fell asleep. Midnight, they get up to do Tikkun Chatzot. They used to do Tikkun Chatzot midnight, you know, to pray for the redemption, this and that. And they hear, they hear... So they get up, they see no candles, dark. They took, somebody took their candles. They want to wash their hands, no washing hands. Somebody took their, the netlatia dying, you know, they cannot wash. They want to open the door, door is locked. Oh. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> they got scared. So they try to see what's happening. They see some light coming from one little window. They see there's a light coming from uh, the big room, the the middle room. I forgot to say that before entering to their own bedrooms, they saw an ox and a donkey harnessed together. And, and, and they, no, this is not allowed by Jewish law. You cannot put an <coughs> ox and donkey together. It's it's not allowed. And but they didn't understand. And they also saw that the room is so neat and so clean. A place that there is donkeys and 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 animals. It's not usually so so clean. Mm -hmm. And why they're in the middle of the room? They didn't understand. You know, they're supposed to be in the barn or something. So they didn't ask questions. They went to sleep. But now when they get up, they see light from there. And so they picked in to to see what's in there. They see these girls, not wearing tzanua at all. And whatever they saw there, they were shocked. They took the, the, the reins from, from this uh, ox and this donkey and this pe they, they turned to become people. Mm -hmm. Now, they had these huge, big black dogs that barked and barked and barked and made so much noise. Okay? And these two, the, this um, 
people that became became people now, they asked them to do a scene with them, and then they put it back into them, the, the, and they turned to be again these animals. So the rabbi understood that these girls are witches, and they they were so scared. How could we get away from this place now? The no, they locked the door and everything. The movie. In the morning they get up, early in the morning they get up, and uh, these people, the, the girls, the ladies, they took the, the animals to the garden that they had there. On the spot they planted seeds of wheat and stuff, and on the spot it starts to grow already. It starts to sprout, it starts to grow, and it starts to... within an hour they came, they harvest everything back, took it and started to prepare breakfast. The rabbis understood that they are not allowed to eat there because if they will eat something from this um, yeah. food. food, okay, they will become enchanted too. They will yeah. become uh, they. So they decided not to eat, but how could they get away from these people? They didn't know. So these girls with a very flattery and sweet talk, they invite them to eat. And they say, you know something, we're so, uh, we have to do some business. We have to run because it's so late. We came here for business. We have to do business. We're going to come at noon time to eat. Then you prepare us a table, whatever you want. So take, take some on the way, you know, take a sandwich, take something. Of course, of course, we'll take, they took the sandwich and whatever vegetables that they grew and they went to the market. On the middle of the way, in the middle of the way, they met, they were, you know, on the field, there was um, some horses, some pigs, some dogs, some whatever. They gave him to eat these things. And then they see how these animals become very, very wild. They jump, they get wild, they, they, they get, they don't know. And then at the peak of the problem, of the, when it's, they're very, very high, it's like, it's like drugs that they took. Mm -hmm. and they start to run towards the house of these witches girls because mm -hmm. they prepared these things. So mm -hmm. they go, they're attracted. The, the rabbis were supposed to eat that and then they will be attracted to these girls. Right. Now the animals ate it. So the girls were not ready for these animals to run to, towards them. The dogs was not next to them. These animals came and That's jumped right. on them and Turn them to pieces. Oh. Turn them the, 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 on the spot. Okay, this is Bo Hashem how they got rid of these girls. <laughs> now the rabbi felt bad. Maybe we could take this uh, spell from this uh, oxen and donkey. And so they took the reins from these uh, people. Oh. They turned and they told them, "Thank you so much. We're suffering from these people for two years. We don't know how to get away from them. Thank you so much for helping us." And Bo Hashem, wow. so they took care of this. There are <laughs> things like that, and, and the rabbis, the rabbis and the Gemara, it says about the Sanadrin, if you want to become in a Sanadrin, you have to know how to do spells and magic tricks also. Why? Because mm. you need to know how to fight against those mm. evil inclinations also, against these evil people. You have to be an answer, you have to have the antidote, how to, you know, uh, work against this magic bad forces in this world. So, it's a story that I read today about the Salam Shpoli. He, spell, he told this story uh, and, and he said, so he said it, he said, and the, the Baal Shem Tov explained how were uh, Rab Zusha and Rabbi El Melech were able to be saved from, from these uh, people. The same of, the same that Yosef Sadiq was able. When this uh, daughter of uh, uh, daughter of uh, Potiphar, the wife of Potiphar, wanted to seduce uh, Yosef. It says that he came to the house, he was almost already tempted, whatever, and then he saw the image of his father. Uh -huh. And this is what prevented him to do the thing. Mm. So he says, put the image of Hashem always next to you. And, and if you know that Hashem is watching you all the time, this is how you're going to be prevented from doing, you know, bad stuff and uh, to do avera, to do, to, to surrender to your evil inclination. Um, um, so the rabbi here uh, explains how can we uh, nullify all kind of spells and stuff. Going to a mikvah or to deep in the water, okay, mm -hmm. it weakens the power of uh, these magic tricks, okay, mikvah. 
I was a man and woman. Reading 15 chapters of Shira Ma'alot helps. Not to take or to attack or, or to give any object to somebody that is that you're suspicious that uh, does all kind of magic stuff, whatever. Increase uh, purity, kedusha, holiness, and increase giving a lot of charity. Whenever you give a lot of charity, it could take from you all kind of bad uh, so, uh, powers from you. To distance from bad people and from sinners. You know, don't be next to them and uh, associate with them and play with them and go with them and drink with them and eat with them. Okay, distance from these people. Now, there are also some zgulot to uh, fight against these things, to check your mezuzot. It says mezuzah, words of zaz mavet. Death is away. getting away from your house. You know, if a mezuzah is a protection. Two. Get away from uh, um, prattlers, people that speak, speak, speak too much, and do a rabbi and follow all whatever rabbi tells you to do. Because, you know, if you have an authority, a rabbinical authority that you can turn to and you can ask questions, okay, can guide you and tell you what to do. A woman, a princess, okay, is supposed to uh, keep her tzniut, her modesty. A man, a prince, is supposed to keep his blit, okay. Uh, to be loyal to his wife, not to do crazy stuff with uh, women. Mm -hmm. Rav Yitzhak Zilberstein, he's a rabbi in Benevak, he was asked once a question. If somebody did already uh, trick a tree or, or, or some kind of a spell or some kind of a magic, are we allowed to enjoy it or, or to benefit it? So he was asked that because um, uh, he said that once Rav Eliashi was asked a question uh, when the Yamanai jury, jury came to Israel okay, in 1948 there was this uh, magic carpet that they came with they came with airplanes and they brought a lot of the, the Yamanites to Israel the Yamanites back in Yemen they kept all the tradition they look like Jewish, they had the simonim, they mm -hmm. had the, the yeah. peot, they kept Shabbat, they knew how to learn, they knew, they knew a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And when they came to Israel, the Israelis, they tried to make them forget all the Jewish laws. And sometimes it was very, very hard, because they were very, they were very strict sure. in their religion. So some of them, unfortunately, abduct little kids, you know, that got sick in a hospital or something. So they abducted little kids and sold it to Ashkenazi families that were not religious, people that didn't have kids, and this is how a lot of kids were disappearing. Mm. Till now, they, they, they're checking in court, what could they do, how could they fight this, or whatever. Anyway, so a family that their child was lost like that, okay, turned to this uh, fortune teller uh, and asked, uh, where's our boy, where's our son? And she, with her magics, with her tricks, so she looked at the cards, or she looked in the coffee, or she looked in I don't know exactly what they do, she was able to tell them where they, the baby. Now, before going and taking and, and, and saving this boy, they asked her, are we allowed to enjoy this? It wasn't a, a real Jewish way to do it. Are we allowed to do it? The rabbi said, no problem. You're not uh, enjoying the, the trickery or the magic. You, you, you're saving your boy. You, it's okay to... To do the, to, to already if you did it, it's okay to to uh, bring the boy home, no problem. Uh, we see that from the other side, a lot of rabbis used Kabbalah in order to uh, to save people from all kind of problems. Golem. Huh? Golem. Right. One of the strongest examples is the golem. Uh, in the 1500s. Uh, Amaral Mipag lived, and uh, in those days, the Gentiles constantly, constantly used to do a lilot dam. You used to uh, uh, kill Jewish people, right? Make uh, the Jewish um, suffer. suffer because they 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 say that the Jewish people they put blood in their matzah yeah. and they yeah. for this they kill Jewish little Jewish boys or something, not, not Christian yeah. boys. And, uh, you know, so Jewish people suffered a lot from that. 
And for this purpose, Amaral, he created a golem. A golem was something that he created from clay. He looked at Sefer Yashar. Sefer Yashar is a very Kabbalistic book. And he created with all kinds of names this uh, creature that was very, very strong. Okay, he couldn't talk, okay, but he would do all oh, whatever the rabbi say. And uh, many times it says that uh, whenever they try to plot on the Jews that uh, they, they killed a little Christian boy or something, so he would go, he would find who plotted that and who was the real one that really killed this boy, and they would bring him to justice, they would go to the courts and they would win, okay, so, so they couldn't do anything wrong to, to, so we see. And then later on he said uh, again a name and, you know, He's this so guy, uh, he put him to sleep, yeah, forever. So, uh, it says about David Melech that uh, used, uh, we, we, uh, the first one that we know in the Torah was Moshe. Moshe used the holy name to kill the Egyptian. How did you know that? Okay. And so also at the time of David Melech, when he put the foundation to build the holy temple on Temple Mount, the underground water came up, wanted to flood everything. And he didn't know what to do. So Achitofel gave him an idea, you can use a, Jew, a holy name and make it come down. And Bemet used a Jewish name, uh, a holy name, and this water came down to whatever it was before, and he was able to save uh, this thing. Um, Harav, uh, some rabbis here say that today, uh, when sometimes people they write talisman, okay, for protection and stuff. Years ago, it used to be very very strong. They used to uh, <coughs> I guess, to swear all kind of names of, of angels that they would put there, and uh, to bind them to do whatever they want. Today, we don't have this type of. Uh, no one is so sophisticated to know the names and to do these things, so it's not that strong like it used to be, so they don't know how to do it. Uh, and if there's a Kameh or something, it's not a problem. Uh, uh, but basically, to go to righteous people that are known that they could bless people, that's better to do. You could go to rabbis, they can, they can bless you. This is the best thing uh, to do. Um, yes, I'll finish with... Rav Abu Chatzera. Rav Abu by the name you can see already, who was this type of person? Abu Chatzera, uh, they got this nickname from, you know, he once ha had to cross uh, a river, so he put a handkerchief, it became uh, a little carpet, and he went on this carpet on top of the water by using name. So <laughs> since then, the name is Abu Chatzera. So once Rav Yaakov Abu Chatzera, uh, one of his students, a kind of uh, spirit get in, got into him, and it bothered him very much, like a dibuk. Mm. It bothered him very, he, he was fainting, he couldn't, he couldn't do anything, he was, he Weak. took all his strength, all his power, he was like uh, dead, like this, weak. very, very weak. And he came to, so people told him, come, the rabbi, can you help him? He comes. And he writes him a talisman, and he told him, you're never going to come close to this person again. And so, for, so for a while it was helping. After a while, again, the spirit got into this uh, student of his. And he came to talk to him, to the spirit, and he says, why you entered again this? I told you. You're not allowed to enter this person anymore. He said, I pray to Hashem, whenever you wrote the Tasman, you're going to forget one of the holy <laughs> names. And Bemet, you forgot one of the holy names. This oh, I, was, I was able to... So then they were talking. Um, no one was there. We don't know exactly what they spoke. They communicated. And then this, this spirit never bothered the, the student uh, anymore. It says, Tamim tiye im Hashem elokecha. Be innocent. Be whole with Hashem. Whatever Hashem tells you, whatever, it, it, why should you care what's going to be in the future? Maybe I could change my lot. Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. Don't do this type of people. A lot of the Gentiles, this is what they do. They go to all kind of uh, magic uh, uh, fortune tellers and they want to know what's going to be in the future, how many kids they're going to have, they're going to be married, when they're going to be married, if they will have money, if they will not. Why do you have to know these things? Hashem sends you to this world for a mission. You have to fulfill your mission, you know? Th 
thing, uh, all kind of struggles, all kind of uh, missionot and tests that people go through, it's for us to build us. You know, if you know ahead of time what's going to happen, it says Israel, my Adam, as Hashem can always change the luck and whatever, yeah. whatever you're going to do is not going to help you. But Hashem, Hashem should save us from this type of uh, bad people Amen. and Amen. connect us to the real Amen. righteous Amen. people. Amen. Bezad Hashem, Bezad Hashem. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.